Whew. All right, we're gonna do this one in my office chair because I, for the life of me, cannot find where my stool has went. And even though I'm spinning around in this thing, I feel like a Bond villain. No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. Uh, thanks for being a prop, Max. All right, we gotta go back to the video. I remember when I first started golfing, I went to a coach who was absolutely obsessed with this video of Roy McIlroy swinging his driver. Look at that setup. Look at how braced that right leg is. Look at the right knee and right thigh and the extension here. And watch the coil on that shirt right now and how far back that club. And look at that right knee and right thigh still absorbing all that, that power that's built in now. And then look at the sort of squat turn and that turns the hip out. Delay the hand action. Whack right there at the bottom. Extension right there. Full follow through right up against the nape of the neck. Watch this. Just like an Adonis follow through. Look at that that is too good to talk about and i'm not kidding you i think i've watched this video probably a hundred plus times like genuinely a hundred plus times every time and every single lesson we would watch this video and we'll work on trying to emulate something that rory was doing and now looking back on it i completely understand that this was definitely not the right path for me to go on because at this point in time i barely understood how to make good contact with the ball and even more importantly, my body at the time was nowhere near strong enough or flexible enough to get into the positions that Roy McIlroy gets into to create the impact conditions that he creates. But also, because contrary to popular belief, Roy McIlroy does not have the perfect golf swing. There's something wrong with his medulla oblongata. <laughs> Before you click off thinking that I'm crazy, I get it. Roy McIlroy's swing is very symmetrical, it's very poised, it is aesthetically pleasing to the eye, and I could watch him hit balls for just pure entertainment and enjoyment. But I stand by my statement, Roy McIlroy does not have the perfect golf swing. What he does have is the perfect golf swing for him. So for today's video, I'm going to be talking about how I'm improving, how you may be able to improve by simply learning to swing your swing. Let's do it right meow. All right, thank you very much for tuning in to my YouTube channel. My name is Kenny. Some of you may know me as Kenny Cat. I am a competitive golfer. My goal is to help you prove your golf faster by learning from some of my successes and also some of my failures. If you want to know what training aids, what lessons, and what practice guides that I'm working on that can help you improve your game faster, hit that subscribe button below and release free content every single week. I watch a lot of golf and I'm a huge fan of the sport, but there isn't a day that goes by where some announcer isn't going goo goo gaga or drooling over Adam Scott's release pattern or talking about Nelly Corda's amazing flexibility and rotation. Just a great position there, and then as he starts back down, he maintains his spine angle beautifully. As he comes through the shot, just immaculate, isn't it, Gary? I get it. These swings are aesthetically pleasing, they're fun to watch, and I'm sure it's good entertainment to watch the swing police. give their expert analysis of why these golfer swings are so good and they do things so well. We're trying to copy what the swing police analyze in a good player's swing without understanding the why behind why that player has that certain movement or has a certain tendency in their swing is a bit like tasting a gourmet cake from a world-renowned chef and thinking that you can make the exact same cake just because you've got a list of the ingredients. And I've seen the great British baking show enough to know that ain't how it works, bro. Oh, jeez. What is it, bro? Huh? There's too much salt in there. To go even further down this example train, because you know me and I love to give a great metaphor, I've been working as an advertising sales professional for the last 13 years of my life. And many people have sat in on my pitches and my meetings to like learn how to like quote unquote sell better. And while I can outsell Don Draper himself with my eyes closed, my ability to tell stories in the way that I do is very unique to my experiences that I have in this world. I would never coach somebody to copy the way that I sell because the way that I tell stories wouldn't be authentic to who they are as a person. But one thing that I always do tell people that I try to mentor in the sales environment is be authentic to yourself 
and build good fundamentals and make sure that you have a process that you consistently follow. You know, the basic ingredients for success. There ain't no shortcuts to success, everybody's gotta take the stairs. And in the same respects, I get why people who've worked with me also want to emulate that because it's very entertaining the way that I can sometimes tell stories. Hence, why I've got this YouTube channel. Hey y'all. But to put that into perspective, that doesn't make my style of communicating or selling any better. There are people who sell better than me or as good as I do that do it in a way that's authentic and natural to them. Some of them use numbers, they're very analytical driven. You might call them the Bryson DeChambeau's of the world. Like whatever that process is that makes sense to them, they're authentic. We are all unique individuals and nobody else can share our unique perspective because no one else has lived the experiences that we've lived from our perspective. It's not called the wheel. It's called the carousel. Ooh, am I getting too deep on y'all? Because I thought this was gonna be a golf video. Don't worry, we gonna bring it right back around to the golf. Stay with me. Have you ever noticed nobody ever says you should be copying Brooks Kepka's swing? The guy is an absolute beast of a golfer and has won four majors. But you certainly don't see Golf Digest articles saying grip the club like Thor's hammer and then power through the ball like you're putting up 225 on the bench press. What about Jordan Spieth? Even when this guy was winning majors from the parking lot, and yes, literally the parking lot, you didn't see the golf world saying you gotta be serving up chicken wings in your golf swing like it's a 4th of July barbecue. Nobody in the world is saying swing it like MB Park. I mean, the woman has won seven majors on the LPGA Tour, and she's made more money than most PGA players despite being paid exponentially less than PGA players. And for the record, I don't think you should be trying to swing it like anybody else, regardless of how many majors they've won. These players are all good at their fundamentals, they all have great ball striking skills, and they are able to get the ball to go where they want it to go and work their way around the golf course and score well, and that is something to take inspiration away from. They all have incredibly hard work ethic. These are all things to aspire to. But every single one of them, they all do it their own way, and that is what makes golf such an amazingly unique and beautiful sport. I'm 100% positive that sometime throughout Phil's career, he's been told not to overswing his driver. And I am absolutely glad that Phil didn't listen to a single one. He takes it there as the right shoulder gets underneath the chin, the shoulders stop, but yet see, see how much the arms carry on and go a little bit further, and then you're gonna see the club head even more. That's not too bad for Phil. People are constantly telling Lexi Thompson about her swing and how it's not gonna work. I'm glad she doesn't listen to a single one of them because clearly she's gotten it done her own way. No, but watch this leg motion as she drives to her left side and she just doesn't go up on her toe on her left foot. Her left foot moves at almost every swing when she does that. But, but it's something I've done ever since I was little. And we all know how DJ feels about his wrist and what anybody has to say about the way he cups his wrist in his golf swing. I don't know, I never thought about it. I've been working with Kurt for the better part of almost two years now. And one of the things I've noticed is I have a tendency to rotate my club face open. And when I first started with Kurt, we tried a couple of different things. We changed my grip to be so strong that my hand was literally under the club. And that worked to some degree, but again, there were some timing issues with that, uh, with that solution. We worked with shutting the face at a dress, and that kind of worked as an okay temporary solution, but it brought in way too many inconsistent variables when you start dealing with different lies and how much the face has to be shut. It just wasn't repeatable. I've also worked with trainers to improve my rotation and my hip flexibility, which has allowed me to use my body rotation to get the club more square through the impact area. But for whatever reason, I just have a tendency to leave the face open. If my club face were a convenience store, it would legit be a 7-Eleven because it's always open. So what Kurt and I have been working with is setting my wrists in the impact position as early as possible and forcibly trying to hold that face closed or feel like I'm holding that face closed throughout the swing. 
So that way, even with my tendency to leave the face a little bit open, the worst thing that happens is I hit it a little bit straight or I have the face just a little bit open as opposed to completely open. Now, the golf world calls this, you know, bowing your wrist or wrist, I think what it is, flexion, AKA what Dustin Johnson does. And it's funny because I've already had a few people walk up to me on the range while I've been practicing and they've made notice of that. Like, oh, you're doing that thing that DJ does with his wrist. And if you didn't know all the steps it took me to get to this point, you might just think that I have a really bowed wrist or that my club face is really shut and facing to the sky or that my angles and matchups don't look as pretty or as symmetrical as a Roy McElroy. But I didn't take time to notice any of that because I was watching my ball find target, which is exactly where I wanted it to go. And the more I focus on swinging my Kenny Cat, the better and the more comfortable I'm going to become because I'm being authentic to myself and I'm swinging my swing. I don't know what sequence of events that happened in Roy McElroy's life that has led his swing to be so aesthetically pleasing that you could frame it in a museum. And honestly, I don't really care. It's very nice to watch, but I'm not Roy McElroy, and I never want to be. I enjoy being Kenny Cat and I enjoy swinging the way that I swing because it's my unique golf print and it's what makes me unique. I made this video because it literally just got me thinking about the golf world being so different than many other sports. Like everyone's always trying to copy and emulate and be like this other person, but at the end of the day, you can only be yourself. I may not be a golf expert, but the success that I've found in life and business has all come down to the idea of focusing on what I do best and staying in my lane. Because at the end of the day, nobody can do exactly what it is that you do. And that again is what makes golf such an amazingly unique sport. Stop trying to copy the masses and don't be afraid to swing your swing. That's all I got for you people. Deuces! Let's keep it.